So, wanted to do an updated shop tour because I changed some things. Some of the stuff may help people with their um, with their shop. You know, that's how I learned everything I've learned down here. has been from YouTube, so I always try to give back pretty much by doing updated videos. So, I'm just gonna do a quick tour of some of the stuff we changed or I changed. Um, we'll start back with the dust collector. So this is a PM1300. It can be 110 or 220. I have it wired for 110 because I just didn't feel like wiring in another 220 outlet. Um, it's an awesome machine. And you know I got four inch uh, main lines to everywhere. And I was starting to not get the suction. I was like, man, is my, did I, I added a little bit more, um, I added a couple more elbows and stuff. I'm like, man, did that really mess up my CFM? And it, and I thought maybe the bag was too full, so I switched out bags. I was going crazy, and I didn't check the most obvious thing. And on pretty much all dust collectors, this is installed in there. And it's obvious what it does. It prevents big chunks of wood and stuff from going through and hitting your impeller and screwing it up. But since I have the separator, nothing big makes it through there, so I don't really need this. So the last thing I checked, I was like, oh, let me pull it off and look. It was jam full of stuff and I don't even know how long it was full for um, but once I took this out it's like I can't believe the amount of suction I have on every tool so if you're having an issue like check the check that first make sure it's not clogged um, tra trash can separator works awesome it just has um, an, an elbow there and an elbow there on your side I'm not going to take it apart it's no big deal everybody um, pretty much knows um, how that works there's a thousand videos on it uh, I've been trying to switch out my blast gates to the metal style just because they're, like everyone says, you start out with the plastic ones and you realize they suck and they get full of um, sawdust and they don't close all the way. And you end up cutting the corners off like I did back there and it's just a pain. So, metal gates are the way to go. I have a little piece of uh, foil tape so when it's closed it sucks us down. If not, you'll lose a little CFM there. Not much, but it helps. Uh, a lot of people have asked, hey, how do you how do you hook them up to the sewer pipe? So let me see if this comes out with one hand. Everything in my shop is friction fit because I like to change stuff. Um, so all that I did, and yeah, there's the blast gate. I put some, um, I did this one I taped to make it a little snugger. You don't have to. I basically cut a piece of the four inch, screwed it, drilled it, screwed it into the blast gate. And then this one, I don't know if I did or not. I think I caulked around the outside edge. It doesn't leak at all. And then you can just stick it into your fittings. That's what I did. I don't want to buy, you know, they make fittings, but if you have extra pipe, it's cheap and it's easy. So that's how I connect those blast gates. The plastic ones are made to fit and I didn't really have to do anything with those. But like I said, I'm getting rid of them. Um, I try to keep my lumber organized and I like everybody else I don't throw out stuff because uh, I always think I'm going to need it but every once in a while you just got to take your scraps and chuck them which I did recently and I think that drum back there is all like construction grade crap lumber that I keep if I'm making like a something a prototype or a jig I need something for but I think that needs to go because it's messy back there um, still have the same jet bandsaw it's on a um, um, uh, movable base same thing with my my joiner I'm actually going to upgrade to an 8-inch helical head parallelogram Grizzly um, probably around Christmas. Um, they're having good sales now with, with $25 delivery, but I just purchased another tool that I'll show you, so I, I don't want to go too crazy. And my planer, I've been, I've been messing around with shop organization, and I've been, right now I just, I'm keeping the stuff on wheels out of the way, and I just wheel it over when I need it, because when I have multiple projects, it tends to uh, fill up the shop. Um, something new I did is... The router table, I bought the casters for it so I can make it mobile. And I moved it over here and gave it its own dedicated uh, blast gate and dust collection port. It's also closer to the machine, so there's uh, better suction. Before I had it down there and I would just use the dust rate attachment. It worked well, but keeping it here um, gets it out of the way. And I forget why I moved it. I think I was doing something. So, like, and I can move it. I can move it in and out depending on if I'm running really long pieces. I'll just move it out a little bit so it clears the miter saw station. Because um, I do run some long uh, stock through it. 
and if it's too close to something, obviously you have problems. So this is a good area for running long stock. I have the, um, the uh, uh, what are they called? The Jessam um, Clear st Stock Guides, maybe? They work awesome, uh, but sometimes they're not enough. I was running the molding. I made the molding for that aquarium stand. We'll get to that. And I was running like eight foot pieces and they would loosen up a little bit when when I was starting to uh, run it through. So I just used some clamps with some extra stock, the same height <clears throat> as the stock going through and it, it worked. So, and I uh, don't mind that bend. That's not over there just because I pushed it back, but adding its own blast gate four inch to the... Uh, the fitting back there that goes into the cabinet and then up top to the fence. Love the Justin table. It's been it's been awesome. And then I just built the drawers. That's that's nothing new. Uh, I put another Y in in case I want to run something to the sander. But this sander I got secondhand from my mother-in-law, and it doesn't really have a good dust collection port in the back of this one. So if I upgrade it, I have a port there if I need it. Um, table saw hasn't really changed. Um, I did use some of this magnetic um i don't know magnetic sheet to fill up or to, to cover up the bigger openings in the cabinet to improve dust collection i did it there and i did on over here it does make a difference and there's still plenty of openings so air is getting in there it's not totally sealed um and then let's see if you can s i don't know if you'll be able to see i did something else in here so I put, I don't know if you can see in here, but there's a there's plywood in here that I put on an angle up to the top. So it cuts the space down inside the cabinet and angles the dust down to here. So a lot of times I don't have the, the bottom of the cabinet on full because I use the uh, Shark Guard dust collection, but if I turned it on, it would suck up a lot of that. Um, I do it every once in a while just to clean it out, but right where, they, um, where the port is is always clear. Um, so the Shark Guard, this is the second version of it with the adjustable splitter. Awesome product when you're cutting a lot. And I, there's dust on here because I just I was cutting without that on. I just put it back on. Um, it's great. It forces me to use a guard so it makes it safer. Because normally if I didn't have the Shark Guard, I wouldn't have a guard on there at all, which I never did. Now I always do. And I have the splitter because the original splitter on this saw bolts into the back of it. And it's kind of a wonky setup and it looks, I, don't, I didn't like the way it looked or how it works. So I, I got the shark guard. Um, now that's my only wooden blast gate. And I just have it because I watched so many people make theirs. I wanted to see if I could make one, which I did. And it, it's pretty simple. It works. Um, and I had some mahogany left. So I just made a handle. Um, and there's a, a line so I know how far, so I don't have to go jam it in right there. It's closed. And then that just goes into a piece of four inch. I made a quick hanger that screwed in. So if I want to move it, I can back down into my trunk, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, these lights, these lights, these and these, the, um, eight foot barinas, um, that shop hacks did a review on. They are awesome. I mean, I, you, pro you probably can't tell, but it is like freaking daylight down here with these things on it is. And they're cheap. Um, and you can daisy chain them. So I just have four and four plugged in, but let me turn them off. So that's just with regular light. It makes a huge difference. There's no shadows. And when you're trying to mark lines and stuff, you know, shadow, shadows kill you. Um, so that's it for that side. Not much difference there other than dust collection um, and the router table change. I did upgrade the miter saw station, J Bates design. I've had this for over a year. It's I still love it. And this area where the, I have a, a DeWalt, which takes up a lot of real estate. So originally the dust containment area was from these set of drawers to these set of drawers. So it was huge. And I'm a little anal when it comes to dust. And this is a, Jay said this is a dust containment system. It's not collection per se. So it's not meant to get it all. Um, but I wanted to change it. So what I did, I put a partition there and I put a partition there, which did a couple things. I was able to add some more drawers. You know, so now I got storage. I have storage there. That's just my dominoes. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet. That's why I just have the plexiglass here to keep dust out and it also uh, 
it makes the airflow in the in here a little bit better. So, yeah, I, the storage to me is having the extra storage is way better than having the big uh, collection area. And I wasn't wasn't sure how I was gonna if I was gonna make more um, drawer pulls out of the mahogany that's on there on the rest of them. Sorry, I'm just putting this back. Put that back. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that because the drawers are different sizes. They're not going to match. So I was like, oh, that one I just I don't put anything on because I can just grab it from the side. And this one I just need a spot to put my square and my marking gauge that I use all the time. So it, it looks like it's just a display, when really it's just a you know it's a drawer. So that's one little change I made. Back here you can see there's two pieces of plywood. Oh, no, um, I still have to put a notch there for the cord so it goes all the way back. But I, I put those on there, they go to a V, or, or back in the corner so all the dust goes down into the four inch hole. I have two here, so if I'm doing a big cleanup, I can just, it's just faster and I just keep a piece of plywood over that. There's a uh, big gulp underneath, um, and it has its own landscape. Works really well, especially now that I unclogged the collector. Oh, another thing I did, Back there, this was just a, a support brace. That's part of the design. And then behind it, it was just open. So I screwed a piece of plywood in there. So another thing, it made the, the whole area smaller so the airflow is better. No dust comes out this way. Obviously it doesn't get all the dust in there, but it gets a good amount of it, which uh, I'm totally fine with. So that's, uh, that's an update there. Um, down here, this is my like, I, I have this here, it's, it's usually a, a cap on it. Um, in case I want to extend over and like, I had a drill press dust collection stuff, you can see it over there, but I moved it and it's not hooked up now. So if I want to add on, I always put a Y at the end so I can add on. Um, but right now I just have my small dust collection hose. It's just uh, a PowerTech fitting. You want to know what it is right there. Uh, part number, 70171. And it just fits right into my fitting and it's it's not a, when it's on it sucks in there and it's this is a Bosch hose it was like I did a review on it maybe 30 bucks the reason I bought it is because it goes to my one green tool the domino which now I use on like every project and it fits right on there and it also fits on my DeWalt orbital sander because I wasn't buying a Festool hose because this does the same thing it does a great job it doesn't leave any dust um, so if you have a domino and you want to do dust collection don't want to spend for the Festool hose and hook it in your system um, that hose works well and I have a video on it on my page so um, I'm actually done with this I was just making some um, a couple mortises um, for the one project that I'll show you in a minute to attach the top so that just goes right back on there we go um, my dust right hose which I use for just cleaning the flat surfaces or, or the floor um, oh, you know what? Okay, maybe I'll finish that flag. It's gonna be the firehouse logo flag. It's, it's one of, as you can see, I had screwed up when I started carving, and then I fit, I reburn it and carve it. So I'm not gonna I'm gonna hang this up here because you can see the old screw up. But I gotta put the 88 in the middle. Um, so there's that. Oh, the newest edition. I'm gonna call this the Corona Special. Um, the Jet 2550 drum sander, which is awesome. And I got $150 off because they damaged the cabinet and shipping. I wasn't going to send it back, but they gave me $150 off, so I was cool with that. It was also 15% uh, off. Sorry, I want to make sure I'm all the way up. Yeah. It was 15% off and free shipping. So I, I wanted one for a while, and I was able to get the biggest one they um, the bigger one. They make a 2244 that oscillates. It's more money, but I wanted the capacity for tops. Um, and I just did this one. That's cherry. It, it makes sanding so easy, and it makes it dead flat right out of the box. Like I rushed a little bit, as you can see down here, because I, I don't have my infeed tables. Infeed and outfield tables are on back order. And when I was lifting this out, the, this was the, the trailing edge. And I was grabbing this out the other end, and it was off a little bit, so my profile got messed up there. That's just because I didn't wait. My fault. 
but it's not not the end of the world. This is getting it's getting painted. That's why it's mostly select uh, pine and dimensional lumber actually in here. Um, this is my project I just finished. It's dimensional lumber inside. Um, it's all dominoed together and glued. And then I did face frame out of um, the select pine because this is going to hold a 75 gallon tank and it's going to be like what's 600 pounds or so because it's uh, 75 gallons and it's eight pounds a gallon. So I wanted to make sure that the the body or the base of it was strong and then I just put decorative stuff on the outside to make it look look good. Just simple shaker doors uh, with inset quarter inch plywood. You can see right here. And then I made the molding out of extra pine that I had through the router table. And it's just first time I ever did molding like this where it protrudes from the door. Normally I do it where it's it's flush with the, with the edge. Um, but I kind of like the way it looked because it was going to be pretty plain and I wanted to do something to make it look a little better. So made it all, everything. The only screws are the hinges because I couldn't find good hinges and he didn't want hidden ones or I would have done, done cab, uh, cabinet hinges. So I put butt hinges because it's going to get um, paid. I painted um, just the metal catches to keep it closed. And then if you can see, so I just used the domino to make the mortises for the uh, clips. So they don't go all the way in. So if the wood moves from side to side, those clips will move in and out and they can even move front to back, which they probably won't um, if as the, as the top moves, cause it will move. Um, I don't know if you can see any more in there. Wood moves. I've had some that never move and some like at the firehouse table that we made and it moves every season, like a lot. So that's why I didn't want to screw it. I never want to screw a top directly in because it could, It'll cause problems. So ran that. Now this, let me pull this out of the way. So, so this is uh, my first like big piece of furniture out of hardwood. It's 100% walnut, black walnut, um, inset drawers. First time I did those. And there's the only screws in this are holding in the drawers. It's all, um, it's all, I'll uh, put together with the domino. Um, the top's not attached yet because I want to run that. Even though it, I sanded already, I want to run it through the drum sander. Uh, once I get the infeed and outfeed tables, it's for my aunt. She wanted something for her office at uh, um, Felician University in Lodi, New Jersey. So she's got it. Uh, there's our tongue. That's how I normally do my molding. I don't know if you can see it in there. I made this this molding too. the same. Normally I do it inset of the of the um, the side of the uh, the piece of furniture because you get some more lines you know in here well I guess you get it either way but it turned out pretty good so I want to I still have to send that through and then I can attach that top um, and then put the finish on I'm not staining it I'm just gonna put some shellac on it because walnut is my favorite wood and it's gonna look great so any other changes here I don't have to measure twice sign was up there I think everybody needs to have something like that in their shop. Um, added some more clamps, even though they're not all up there. Actually, got to put another clamp rack in because I'm gonna. There's there's like three or four more Bessies that aren't up there that are on the router table now, and like the Irwin clamps are kind of it's kind of getting messy up there. So that's a French cleat. The woodpecker corner clamps are on a French cleat, so I, I can always I can move this stuff. But what I'm thinking is putting another one. Another clamp rack, maybe like right here, or or maybe like under there. Just I'm not sure. I'm, these these four foot clamps, these are 50 inches. I could move this whole thing down and then put the shorter clamps on top. I don't know yet. I'm always changing my organization. Like the drill press has been in like 10 different spots. That's where I moved it to now. Cause I don't really don't need it on dust collection, and it's not a bad spot to have it over there. It reaches my plugs. Uh, what else? If I didn't show you, I, I put, I wired in an outlet in the ceiling. One of the best things I did, I, I always have my WEN air filter on there. I have the Brina lights plugged in and I still have an extra plug. Like right now it's running that light. But if I am want to plug my sander in or the Domino, the, the DF, the uh, 500 DF. Anyway, the, the Domino joiner. Um, I'll plug it up there. So that, I definitely recommend doing that is adding a um, outlet on the ceiling. Let's see, I think that's everything. 
that I've done. Uh, just my fire stuff up there. I'm running, I need more wall space. This basement's big, but when you start building stuff, it gets smaller. So this table I built. Out of, it's all built out of plywood. I got plans online for it, and it's awesome. It's on wheels. I can move it wherever. Uh, I use it a lot, and I just it's plywood top with just hardwood um, around the edges. It's been great. I, I'm kind of thinking I'm going to take the top off, keep the base because it's solid. It's, that's more just intended with plywood. Um, it's worked out great. And then put a hardwood top on it and then drill dog holes, put a vise on it because I'm, I'm starting to use hand planes more and doing a lot of other stuff. And my, my just generic vise that I got to review for Home Depot is just, it gets in the way. And I'm just at that point now where I think I need to upgrade. But that's pretty much where I'm at. Um, I hope something in here helped uh, help somebody make a decision on something they're doing with their with their shop. I'm always changing. I'm you know building stuff for the shop is is awesome. Now I have plenty more room, but I don't know if I'm gonna expand into the rest. The basement's like 1,700 square feet, and I got probably just under half of it for my shop, which I'm happy about. Um, so that's about it. Until the next time, that's my shop. And uh, hopefully everybody has a good uh, weekend and make some sawdust.